You asked for it. Let's do it. Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information. That's right, despite what the box says, this is the Epiphone Noel Gallagher. So recently, Gibson just came out with the new Noel Gallagher ES355. We reviewed and documented it in this episode, so you can check it out there if you'd like. But they also came out with a new Epiphone model, which is great because the old Epiphone models from about 1997 through 2005-ish, the Supernovas as they were called in the blue and Union Jack finish, were starting to get very expensive on the used market. So Gibson blessed us with another collector's model, and one that's a little bit more affordable for everyone to get. And let me tell you, people are pumped up about these new Riviera models because they're sold out everywhere. But this is a new model in the core collection, so don't worry, they will eventually come back in stock. It just might be a little bit of a waiting game. So let's go ahead and get this thing open to see if it's living up to the hype so far. I mean, first off, we get a hard shell case on an Epiphone guitar. That's a nice touch. But let's see if the guitar itself is worth it. Oh yeah, that's a nice dark wine red finish. His Gibson one was more of like an aged cherry, so it's a little bit different from that if you're thinking this is just the Epiphone version of that, but I mean, it's not at the same time. This is the Epiphone Riviera model. Apparently his original one is like an early 80s example. I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know too much about 80s Epiphones. But in case you didn't know, there was once a time when Epiphone was its own separate company. Like the vintage Epiphones are worth quite a bit. Now in the 80s, it was definitely owned by Gibson, so maybe not too much of a difference on this particular guitar, but a little bit of Epiphone history there for ya. So first thing, straight out of the case, this is a chunk of a guitar. Like, wow, that is heavy. I would guess nine and a half pounds right now, but we'll have to weigh it on the workbench when we get all the other specs. But the neck is really beefy. Our fretboard's actually looking pretty good for being Indian Laurel. And of course our headstock's gonna look a little bit different on this model too, but that's just going back to the heritage of the original Epiphone models. I'm actually kind of surprised to see we actually have a giant volute back here too. I didn't know to be expecting that. That's what this little bump is right here in case you're not familiar with that term. Within Epiphone's current lineup, they also have a different Riviera model that's your basic one. It's $699. Now, what makes the Knoll versus the regular one different? We've got humbuckers in Knoll's signature, whereas the other ones have a mini humbucker. We've got a stop bar tailpiece instead of the stepped trapeze style. And you might say, hey, well, at least the color's the same. No, it's not. This is wine red, whereas the other one is sparkling burgundy, which is a slightly metallic finish. And you also have the option of royal tan. Are there other minute differences? Maybe, but I'm not well-versed enough to really tell you. But $699 versus $899, you might be thinking, huh, $200 upcharge just for a Knoll name, a custom finish, and a signature decal on the back? Well, keep in mind, the regular ones actually do not have a hard shell case, so to be honest, I think they were very fair in their price point on this one as compared to other models within their lineup. Is a hard case worth $200? I would say one of the Epiphone ones is worth like $150. So only a $50 premium for his name and bringing this all back, that's a good buy. I'm curious what other case candy we might have with this. Well, we get our switch tip and a key, and it looks like all the regular Epiphone stuff here. So no fancy COA booklet that's signed like the Gibson version. So it might be a little bit of a letdown on that front, but so far I'm liking what I'm seeing, you know, for somebody who just wants a piece of Noel Gallagher history. I mean, this is pretty much a reissue of the guitar he used in the Don't Look Back in Anger music video. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and throw this thing on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Okay, this Epiphone is scary, guys. Like, scary good. I got this one from the Gibson Garage, and apparently they set up every single guitar. Like, you would think every shop would do that, but the truth is, not all of them do. They did a great job on these frets. These are not the stock Epiphone strings. So, if you get yours and the frets feel a little bit scratchy and the strings aren't so nice, either take them to a tech that can polish them up for you and get fresh strings, or do it yourself, because it truly is a night and day difference. Well, let's check out these pickups. Inside here, we have Epiphones. They are the Alnico Classic Pro set in the neck, as well as in the bridge. In my experience, these are actually pretty good pickups. However, I think they could have bumped up the price another hundred bucks and gave us the Gibson USA pickups. That would have made this guitar even better. But here we can kind of see their transitional neck tendon, I guess you could say. Then you've got your QR code. If you scan it, I believe it takes you to Epiphone's website and that's your serial number right there. And your model identification. In case this sticker happens to fall off, that's inside the Ethel. That tells you the rest of that too. But check this out, braided wiring. I don't remember seeing that on the other Epiphones. Here you can see the layers of wood that make up the top. The website just says layered maple, so I'm not sure if Epiphone uses the poplar in the center or not. But then we can see the spruce bracing on the top and back, then a maple center block. 
This is actually one of the cleaner looking ES style instruments we've looked at in a while. As far as pickup readings, bridge is 7.84 k ohms, neck position 7.69, and middle position for fun 3.88, so it should be fairly traditional sounding. And then this is just a regular three-way toggle switch. Nice and clicky as the Epiphone ones typically are. Then a volume and tone for each pickup. We've got the pointers on each of them too, though rounded off. As far as hardware, it's your regular Epiphone lock tone for your bridge and your tailpiece. They call them lock tone because of these little barbs on the inside. It helps lock it to the post. Here's a look at the pick guard. It's just got the Epiphone E logo on it, and it's a little bit more curvy than like some of the Gibson models, but it is pure white with a black layer in between. Now they might call this maple wood grain, but whatever maple they're using, it almost looks like mahogany to me, and I really dig that look because it just changes the whole guitar, especially like this area. You can kind of see the mahogany influences I was talking about, but this is a real nice high gloss finish, and it's got a little bit of yellow built into it too. Like if you look at it from the edge, sure Epiphone binding is a little bit yellow naturally, but I think they've actually slightly tinted the clear coat, which adds to the whole evil hue of this. So the spec sheet says this is an Indian Laurel fretboard, but as I was telling you, right out of the box, this is one of the nicest fretboards I've received out of Epiphone. I mean, if we're getting really nitpicky, there's like something going on with the fretboard right here where like a polish or something got stuck in the wood grain. There's also a few light tooling marks around the binding, but honestly, nothing too extreme that you're really going to notice. I had to be really looking for this stuff. But you'll notice our inlays are a little bit different from what we normally see on Gibsons. For example, a 64 ES335 would have small block inlays, whereas these are those, but slightly askew, and parallelograms. But we have a 24 3 quarter inch scale length with 22 medium jumbo frets with a 12 inch fretboard radius and a nut that measures 1.7 inches and increases to 2.90 by the 12. It's advertised as a slim taper C neck profile that measures 0.81 at the first fret neck depth. And then yeah, that stays skinny, 0.91. Here's the neck at the first fret and the 12th fret. The way it feels is it has a decent shoulder around it, but it tapers off quickly and then you just have that flat C shape on the back. It's kind of similar to the old Epiphone D, but a little bit more tapered, so it's comfortable. If you like thin necks anyways, it really does just feel like you have a flat back of the neck, pretty much all up and down the neck. So if that doesn't sound great to you, maybe pass on this one. As far as our headstock goes, we've got our Perloid Epiphone logo up here with a crown. And I've been hearing some talk online that the truss rod cover isn't 100% correct for this era of reissue. I don't know anything about that. To the untrained person, <laughs> this looks good enough to me. It's got the Epiphone E. And the white looks pretty good on the headstock, I would say. So far, the only real quality complaint I have is this particular tuner. There's a certain area where it gives a little bit, but it still functions perfectly fine. And that's the only tuner that does it. And hey, just for fun, let's use the endoscope on this thing. Wow, yeah, that is pretty clean for a semi-hollow. So what we're seeing here is our maple center block and those spruce bracing on the top there, as well as on the bottom of that same block. And here you can kind of see the quality of the lumber starts to deteriorate just a little bit. But that goes all the way down and is looking pretty good. And we do indeed have curved edges. Looks like probably made out of some sort of a mahogany material would be my guess. However, the curving looks a little bit different than the Gibson style. And of course we have our Epiphone logo here that we were talking about earlier. But let's get into treble on the treble side. Maybe not as clean of a job over here. You can kind of see a little bit of the gap right there. But there we can see the pickup cavity routes, how they're chopped out and that they have all the wires going on. But what I like to see is this right here. That's wire management. That way, when you're looking at the guitar like this, you don't see all the wires. So that is a nice touch. But then again, at $900, I kind of expect that. But let's see, what kind of pots are we using here? It's looking like it might be CTS. It's kind of hard to tell. But it doesn't look like we're getting orange drop capacitors in this model. But all things considered, the wiring job looks pretty good here. Moving on to the backside, not too much to see, except for, yes, it is indeed a carved back. And it's got that same really tight wood grain. It's got a little bit of waviness, especially in this area. Other times it's a little bit more circular. The only flaw I could see in the paint is there's like a little bit of a dip right here, probably caused by some sort of a contamination. So not perfect, but hey, that's a nice glossy dark wine red finish. I guess if you really want to get in their face, yeah, there's a little bit of bleed right here on the binding and a little bit of unevenness here. 
But everything else is looking really clean. Now surprisingly, on the spec sheets on Epiphone's official website, they don't tell us what the neck is made out of. I would assume it is mahogany. However, I was shocked to see this. It's actually three pieces of mahogany. So one here, one there, and then a middle stripe. Now, when you actually get to the neck itself, it becomes very, very hard to see that. But if you get it in the light just right, yes, you can't see it running up the center. That's not a bad thing, by the way. Sometimes laminated necks like these are ultra strong. Well, at least they're supposed to be. And having the addition of the volute here, I mean, that makes these very nice. And this is Knoll's signature. It's just a decal though. But we've got our E logo tuners here and all your typical Epiphone stickers handcrafted in China, QC inspection. But the moment of truth, the weight is nine pounds. I mean, it feels heavier than that. So maybe the body's a little bit heavier than the neck and that's what creates that illusion. But I guess nine pounds is a little bit heavy for one of these, but not too bad. So overall, just a few QC things, minor paint issues, the dip on the back. For whatever reason, Epiphone truss rod cover screws are just always slightly askew. But I saw far more positive things on this one than I did negative. Well, let's go ahead and plug this one in and hear how it sounds and plays. Let's talk about the tones of this thing. It's a really deep, rich sound. It doesn't quite have as much top end of a lot of the other guitars we've been demoing. I noticed that instantly when I kicked some distortion on when I was first just noodling on this thing. Honestly, I didn't think it sounded that good distorted, but the clean tones like have some nice jazzy elements to them. gives me American woman type vibes. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now that we know all about Noel's new signature Epiphone Riviera, what are my final thoughts on this? I think it's one of Epi's best new entries. I mean, I am just impressed by the way these frets feel, by the way the whole guitar feels to play. It's very substantial in its weight. I mean, if I was blindfolded and you just handed me this, I mean, you can't tell, but I'm closing my eyes right now. I mean, I could probably tell by the feel of the finish being poly versus the nitro. However, everything else is like there as far as like what a Gibson would be like. So so if you get one that doesn't feel just as good as a Gibson, take it to a guitar tech and ask him for a fret polish, and I bet your guitar is just going to come to life. But this is a great guitar. It's very substantial. The only downside is the pickups are very selective in what they inspired me to play anyways. They sound great on clean. They've got a nice mellow tone to them. So if you're trying to do like some 60s stuff, I think that might bode well for that on a little bit of a clean jangly jangly type tone. However, if you're trying to rock the stadium, I personally didn't love the pickups for that, but who knows, maybe set your amp up differently than I did and you might have better results. One other thing I want to mention about this is it's very loud acoustically. <laughs> And now with a pick. Pretty much at the end of the day, the only thing I don't like about this guitar are the tuners. I don't like the small buttons, but I get it. They're going for the whole vintage aesthetic and that's what they had back then. But slap some Grovers on here and I think you'd have a much better time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out the new signature Noel Gallagher Epiphone Riviera, and we will catch you guys tomorrow on the next one. Take care.